Right. Happy Father's Day to all those. <laughs> um, all right. Hey, Jeff, the, the last time we talked to you from, was lottery night. Um, you know, since then, as you looked at the options, gone through the, the workouts, talked to other teams, just, just how good are you feeling about the, the flexibility of where you sit with, with two early picks <clears throat> in this draft? I mean, there's a lot to process for us still. We're still four days out, and, um, you know, the nature of these things is uh, we all um, try to get our work done early so that we can kind of, um, you know, predict the unpredictable and, and organize chaos, you know. Um, but obviously, the flexibility that we have now to go through this process has been hard earned. It's not fun to go through tough seasons, but we did it with an objective in mind, and um, we do have some. Um, ability to, uh, you know, maintain our flexibility going forward, maybe um, look at different avenues to explore. And, um, you know, not, not every team has that. So, you know, we still want to be disciplined with our flexibility. You guys were in a summer spot two seasons ago in terms of having two draft picks. Just how's the approach been different? to the draft, you know, 2021, you drafted Franz and Jalen compared to going into this draft with two lottery picks? The process doesn't really change, you know, and obviously there are a lot of partners in this process, so you, you can only control what you can control, but, um, you know, we're dealing with um, agents and, and they have, they have um, very difficult uh, decisions on their side to make about how many teams their players visit and what makes sense for them, um, what kind of workouts to put them in. We're dealing with teams who have to figure their own stuff out, and it all changes changes every day like the visits change all the math daily so that's why you know the old expression if the draft were held one day earlier or one day later it would probably be completely different every day you're gaining so much new information you're processing it and and, and your competitors are as well so the ground beneath your feet is constantly shifting kind of building off of that you know two years ago felt like it was still kind of the very beginning stages of, of this rebuild developmentally as a team we've seen them grow into what they were what they were last year you know you've added all these some players how does maybe where the team is developmentally change how you approach this draft maybe compared to where you guys were two no years it's years? a great question I mean we want to move the team forward you know um, I've said to you guys we want to play better basketball you know we want to make better decisions we want to have um, our awareness and and our maturity level um, really um, start to um, elevate itself and become more of a, a veteran team. Um, that said, not at the expense of doing what we're doing, you know, which is growing a team um, organically um, with young, talented, high character players and trying to maintain as much flexibility through the process as possible. So another way of saying like no skipping steps. Jeff, how do you balance best available <clears throat> player versus the yeah, as always, that's always the question, you know. And honestly, those are the only two maybe most obvious, you know, levers, but there are so many more, you know. Character, uh, development path, timetables for the players, uh, how they fit into, you know, different uh, uh, sectors of our organization. I mean, there are so many factors that, that come into play. I will say that um, one of the things that we've been very keen on paying attention to is giving each player a pathway to success and to growing into their potential here. And so um, that is part of our discussion as we go through the process. You know, if we, if we pick player X, player Z, you know, will he have a pathway here to succeed? Does having a clear cut number one in Wembenyama change anything for you guys as, as far as which players you're looking at? instead of having a question number one? No, I mean, you know, you 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 want to kind of create like a tiered kind of ranking uh, uh, um, uh, way of looking at the board and that way you know, you know, as, as you're having discussions with other teams, uh, what it would mean to jockey around to different parts of the draft. You know, now we're in this group, now we're in this group. Um, once you're in a group, you know, anything can happen. Um, so, uh, but, but obviously having a player um, uh, who you know is going number one and there are no questions about it, kind of, you know, at least, at least it, it, it starts the draft at two. But, you know, that doesn't really do a lot for us at six and 11. You, you mentioned leaving pathways for players, you know, with six, 11, and 36, the second round pick. Do you worry that while trying to push the team forward, there's, you can have both the pathways for three rookies while also pushing the team forward in terms of development? considering what you guys built off of last Yeah, year. I mean, it's, it's something that we discuss. But, you know, what you also hope for is to get to a place where, you know, rookies aren't just handed minutes. 
you know, like hopefully our team is growing to the place where it'll be more difficult for rookies to earn their minutes. And um, I think that's the expectation that we have is as our team gets better, uh, it's not like we're giving these minutes to 33 year olds, you know, um, but as our young guys grow and indoctrinate themselves into the NBA and, and, and winning ways, hopefully winning habits, winning routines and with health, um, you know, hopefully we're getting to a place where it, it becomes, uh, you know, rookies have to earn their time. You mentioned uh, kind of the, the age, the age thing, how, how young the team is, and, and maybe adding some veterans. How you know you're obviously on two tracks at the same time with the draft this week and NBA free agency starting next week. How do how do those two kind of play with each other, especially now with where the team where the team's at development? Yeah, well, we have a lot of internal. Um, dialogue about free agency obviously like there there are two kind of concurrent paths but one comes first and so uh, obviously the 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 biggest part of free agency is what does your roster look like so we talk a lot about free agency but the first part is what is the what does our own roster look like when the dust settles after the draft and that will inform free agency a little bit uh, but that said we have to be prepared to go in any direction and that's what we try to do we try to be as thorough as possible right now as we look at our free agent options you know potentially who knows until you get to july 1 what your real options are it takes you know partners um, but right now we're we're having those dialogues uh, uh, um, so that when when the when the dust settles on draft night, we can strike out on a path that we're not just starting from ground zero. Jeff, good draft now for you guys in your core in the front office now with Jamal. Kind of how has that collaboration between everyone evolved over these last three drafts, being in different situations at each time? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what we're trying to do here. You know, we've spoken a lot about that. Uh, Coach Mose is, is an amazing collaborator, you know, not just with, you know, um, my staff, but with, with, with the whole organization, you know, um, performance, analytics, player development, everything that we're doing, um, you know, we, we pull information from everyone here. There's no one in this building that doesn't have a seat at the table and coach Mose is a great partner in that he's a great leader in that and um, I feel that our process continues to grow more collaborative every year. There's a lot of local interest in working out Taylor Hendricks from UCF just what, what about him intrigues you as a prospect? Well you know we always start with the person you know that's what we do here and um, you know Taylor's a, 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 a really really um, sharp bright guy who um, is motivated and, and um, you know, we have really enjoyed spending time with him, you know, getting to know him better. Um, obviously, he's on a trajectory that's kind of, you know, unique. It's not, it's not uh, really like to, an, to the point of being an outlier, but it's kind of uh, interesting to watch his trajectory this year. He wasn't one of these guys coming into the season. Uh, obviously, you know, being local, we've kind of um, had probably a good uh, uh, seat to, to to watch that happen. Um, but, you know, other than that, you know, teams in this league are very thorough. They're scouting him as well as we are. Um, but he's, but he's a, a, you know, great kid. And, and, you know, it was really, we had a great visit with him. Having two picks puts you in a really interesting position in this draft. And it's not like it was two years ago where you're kind of starting this rebuild. You've got a lot of pieces in this rotation. So does that encourage you to take more risks possibly with trading up, possibly trading down in this draft? Um, yeah, I mean, we've had those discussions. Like, does this allow us to take a swing? What does that mean? Um, you know, uh, two more of the levers, right? I mean, that's that's like you can you can like create like endless levers if this then that. So, you know, literally dozens of them. But that's something that definitely um, has been part of our conversation. Um, how 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 does having two lottery picks make us um, does it does that make us look at the draft differently than it would if we just had one? Um, but obviously we can have all those layered conversations, but it's all about the players. We, we, it's all about getting to know the players, getting to know them as people, how they would fit here. You know, um, it's, it's kind of like what we go to bed and wake up thinking about how would they fit here. And so, um, you know, uh, that that's that's the that's the conversation in the room. And then, boom, now you blow up the room to the rest of the league because it takes partners to see really when you talk about like moving up, moving down, you know, what's the price for that? You know, what's 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 where does that put us into our different tiered rankings? You know, like what's the value of that to us? Um, so, the, you know, these are all parts of the conversations that we go through while we're actually evaluating the, the players individually. With the new CBA, it seems like there's going to be different mechanisms when it comes to two-way players and second-round picks in terms of how you can sign them. Just how does that impact the likelihood of you guys 
selecting someone at 36 versus maybe trading that pick away? Right now, I would say that, you know, that's coming. It's coming at everybody, um, and it's probably going to be coming more immediately to some than others. Um, part of the uh, benefit of probably um, having, uh, I would say, earned some of the flexibility that we have the last couple of years um, is it does put us in a place where that's probably not um, of tantamount concern to us right now. I don't think that will figure too heavily into our math. When it comes to uh, kind of on that point, though, like, what are the conversations around the league like? Are, are they different at all, knowing that you know these new these new rules, you know, beyond just second up picks and you know, two way guys, that, that the, these new rules are coming? And I know it's not finalized yet, but are, are the conversations around the league a little bit different, preparing for for that for that eventuality? Like, yeah, next year, a little bit next year, and mostly the year after. Yeah, no, no, but 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 there are teams where it's going to affect them immediately, and so so yeah, we look, we all plan, right? We all have to plan for this year, for next year, for the following season, and you know we all have to see is that when's that train coming at us, you know? And that train is coming at different teams at different times, um, and so you know you have to know who you're talking to for sure. I mean, it affects some teams more immediately than others, and um, you know that's kind of uh, uh, probably you know. Uh, uh, a, a GM phone call 101. You know, where are you guys? What are you trying to accomplish? And the math is different for every team. So yeah, that definitely factors into the calls. Uh, right now with us, you know, it probably doesn't hit us as hard right now. It's coming at everybody. It doesn't hit us as hard right now. So, um, but you know, that's part of like having these discussions with teams and trying to figure out who your partners are. Jeff, going off that, how do you, you your guy that plays your cards pretty close to the best, so how do you put out feelers to other teams without revealing what maybe your true intentions are? <laughs> um, you know, that's a funny question. I feel like, um, like every, probably every business, you know, our business is based on relationships, you know. And um, I do feel that uh, what you want to do is be as candid as you can be. And no one in this time, you know, I always say NBA, never believe anybody, <laughs> right? So um, this time of year, we have to be guarded, but obviously um, over the years, you develop relationships with people and you understand maybe um, I can say maybe maybe something more to this person than I can to the other person. Um, but, you know, listen, at some point you have to be somewhat revealing if you want to get something done. And so uh, I think it's, uh, it's a balance. It's like anything else. I don't think it's rocket science. It's just relationships. And it's also understanding, you know, how strongly motivated the other teams are. Maybe you'll be a little more forthcoming if you sense like, hey, there's a real possibility to get something done here. Let's, you know, open it up a little bit. But, you know, those are all kind of by feel, I think. You talked about the importance that this organization places on building organically through the draft, right? When you look at this year's draft class in particular, the talent, the skill set, the players available, what makes you confident that you're going to be able to do that again or you sit at 6 and 11? Well, we have two lottery picks, and it's a pretty good draft. So um, I think that we're looking at a lot of good options. Um, you know, we can go a number of ways, um, you know, both uh, – you know, sticking to the draft or, or, or moving around a little bit. Uh, there, are, there are several options in front of us, and uh, we're still trying to assess what those all look like to us. Um, when I say build organically, um, I feel that um, we want to keep a pathway for our young guys to, to develop and reach their potential. And we have a lot of evaluating to do this season. We have a lot of young guys who, um, you know, we expect to take steps. You know, so we have to evaluate our own roster and scout ourselves and look at ourselves in the mirror. And hopefully, you know, we're, we're all, you know, uh, trending the way that we want to trend. But, you know, it's the NBA. It's hard. You know, plans are one thing and then execution is another. So we'll kind of see as we go through it. Everyone do you, good? Feel, do you feel like you were able to get in front of all the all the prospects you want to get in, whether it was here, whether it was meeting them elsewhere, whether it was seeing them at the Combine, do you feel like you were able to Mostly, mostly. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, because um, um, there, are, there are many layers to it, and um, I think that uh, this one thing that I, that I do feel very strongly about is that we are, we are becoming a destination. I think a lot of players want to be here, and a lot of agents like what we're doing. And, you know, the beauty of the NBA is, um, uh, is, is the locker rooms are open, right? Every player in that locker room has an agent, and those agents have players in other locker rooms, and they compare, they know. So if you feel like you're doing it right, that's, that's good for you. 
So, um, you know, that being said, agents have difficult decisions to make on, on you know, where their guys are going to go and what positions, you know, teams already are, are saturated with and they have to make their own decisions. But I would say overall we've had a pretty good group in and, and for the most part we've gotten to see who we want to.